Hi, I'm Allie. Join me as I show you how to do these Crystal Quinn bezeled earrings featuring a design by our community member, Chris Lewis King. With some change-ups, these can be made for all different sizes of Rivoli's, and I'm excited to share. So make sure that you watch till the end for all of those different counts. Remember, if you need any Rivoli's, any bugles, or any seed beads, go ahead and look below the video in the description, and we'll put links there back to the website. Gather up your materials, and let's get started. All right, so to go through and create this beautiful pendant or earring or even a component that you could link together with different sizes, which would be absolutely gorgeous, we're gonna be using some 11 OC beads, some three millimeter bugle beads, four millimeter bicones, and three millimeter pearls. Add in some 15 OC beads, and those are gonna go along with our 12 millimeter Rivoli that we're using here. In her original design, Chris actually has versions, and I'll talk you through them, to use with a 14, a 12, and then also a 10 millimeter. We're gonna begin with five bugle beads on about four feet of white dragon thread in a size six. Between those bugle beads, I have two of my 11 OC beads in my champagne color, and I'm simply gonna tie this into a knot. When tying this into a knot, be aware that this is the front of the project, so you don't want your knot to be huge, you want it to be really, really concealed in there. Once you have that knot tied, you're gonna sew through your first two 11 O seed beads and bring your needle out. From here, I want you to add one and two more 11 O seed beads and sew back through the two that you just added or that you were just coming out of through the opposite direction. At the same time, if you want to, if it's being kind, you can also sew through the next bugle bead. These two beads then are gonna sit directly on top of the beads that you just brought your needle and thread out of. We're gonna repeat this a total of five times all around that interior beginning circle. Two beads get added back into the two beads that your thread is coming out of, starting at the opposite side, and then on to the next one. Go through your next bugle, and you're spinning it the whole way around. Like I said again, this is gonna be the front of your piece, one and two, and the whole way around. As you're adding these here, the two beads are going to sit on the side of your Rivoli. So the two we're currently adding sit right on the side of the Rivoli, and we're gonna add a third grouping of our ladder stitch or those two beads on top. Two more beads get added, and you go back through those two that your thread was just coming out of, as well as back through the original bugle. Move that starter thread or that stop thread out of the way a little bit. Go back through those two seed beads that your thread was originally coming out of. Step up into the two beads that you added at first in that second row. And now we're gonna add a third grouping of beads. Add a third group of beads Coming out the top of those two seed beads, add your two beads and then go into the bottom of those two. Ladder stitch by going back through the two that you just added. Pick up a 15-O seed bead, another bugle, and a 15-O. From here, we need a third grouping in our next little section or arm. Add two more 11s, which are gonna sit above the two that are already there. So it's gonna seem like you're working backwards a little bit, but you're going to sew back through the second set of two beads on the second arm towards that first arm. That allows the 15 and the bugle bead to sit between those two rows of arms and through those next two beads. Once again, repeating this five times, 15, bugle 15, two more 11s, and back through the third arm here, towards the second, through the second row of two beads. Back through the two beads that you've just added. This is one of the simplest ways to bezel a Rivoli ever. Two more beads get added here. Again, back through the next arm, through those second two beads. Circle back in a ladder stitch fashion through those two beads that you just added after the 15s and bugles. 
Now you have one more to add. And then we're gonna make sure to grab our Rivoli before adding it to connect the first and the fifth little arm there. And out. Go ahead now and pick up your Rivoli and we're gonna put the Rivoli in in a reversed setting. So it's going to have additional seed beads along the back to hold it in place, but you're gonna put the Rivoli in face down towards the interior of that little basket that we've created. So from here, you really could do the crystal kind of either way. I wanna see as much of that crystal outer ring and get the reflection as possible. So I have my 12 millimeter Rivoli, 12 millimeter Rivoli, excuse me, face down, sitting in that little pocket that I did. And I am adding one last 15-0 bugle, 15-0 combination and sewing back through those first two seed beads that my thread was originally coming out of on this third row that we've done. And at the same time, I'm sewing back through the next, the next two 11s, the next bugle set and the next two 11s. As you pull this nice and tight, you can see that it fits in there pretty perfectly. On the front, you'll have your nice set of bugles, which we will go in and kind of straighten out as you're working with it. But I wanna pull this back section a little bit tighter. And this is where the tension won't matter as much because we're filling in the back a little bit. Go ahead and add three more 11 0 seed beads. And then through the next two seed beads of the 11s in line, not through the 15s, and not through the bugles at all, just through the seed beads and out. Once you're through those seed beads and out, I want you to take those 11 0 seed beads and kind of push them towards the back there. Three more seed beads get added. Skip over the bugle bead. Go into those next two 11 0s along the side. With your finger, just push those three beads towards the back, folding them over the back of the Rivoli. Continue around three beads through that 11 0. Back to the back and around. To hold them in tighter, we're going to go one time around then as we go ready, get ready to add the last one and just add one 11 0 between each grouping of three. That tightens up the back. You can also use this if you want a C bead look to it. And if you don't want the 11 O's to sit quite as high, you can also use four 15s. After you get those five groups of three here, we're gonna pull it nice and tight by going back through the original three that I just added and bringing my thread and needle out. Add one more 11 and go through the next group of three seed beads that you just added. Add a seed bead through the next group of three C beads. And what this is doing is just pulling that back tight enough. You don't have to worry about the Rivoli coming out the back. And also it gets the front with the bugle nice and centered. When you look at it, it pulls it equal amounts to each of your sides. This also prevents you from having a lot of extra thread showing along those ladder stitch rows or my little arms as I called them. Once you get your final 11-0 in place between the grouping of three beads, you get to have some fun and decorate the sides. From here, I wanna go back through the two C beads that my thread was originally coming out of, and I'm gonna go back through the side two beads. So as you rotate your Rivoli, you can see that the whole way along the side here, in her design, Chris did a great job of having an open space to add more beads. If you don't wanna add more beads and you just wanna keep it nice and simple, you can also do so, and this is a great little earring. From here, we're gonna go around the sides and add in our crystals. To add in our crystals, I want you to add one 11, one four millimeter crystal, one 11, and then simply sew in to the next second row of your grouping of two 11 O's. This continues the whole way around the Rivoli, but again, if you wanna change it up, you can even just have it on one side or do it on the bottom of the two. I like this design because there's a lot of variation that you can do once you get past 
just creating that simple bezel on the interior. Going around them, adding in those last little seed beads. And of course, I need a couple more of my 11 O's out. Once again, when you get to this portion, if you want to, you can stop and be done, or you continue on and add a little bit of that pearl look. So for the pearl look here, what we're going to do is come out of the 11 O after the four millimeter crystal, add a 15 and one of your pearls, followed by a 15, and then into the next 11 prior to that four millimeter bead and the 11 that sits after it. Coming out there then, continue on, adding in your 15 pearl, 15 combo into the next four millimeter bead and the 11 O's on either side. Go ahead and repeat this three more times to get your three pearls into that nice star manner. As you finish up adding your last pearl, go ahead and go back through that first 11 O crystal 11 O that your thread was coming out of, and then also progress through the first 15 O that you added on the side of the first pearl. Give it a tight little pull to make sure any additional thread that was showing is not anymore. Add a 15 and pick up a wire guard. If you don't have access to a wire guard or you need to get one, you can always um, look below the video in the description and we will put a link there to our website. But you can also just do a loop of seed beads if you like. I love the wire guards. I think they make it a really nice professional look. And then you can always add whatever ear wire you want or put them on interchangeable ones um, like huggy earrings that we have. Add a 15 0 after your wire guard and come back down through the 15 0 right after. This will make it sit right on top of the pearl. And what I want to do is go through and reinforce this. Now, to reinforce it, you're going to have to basically circle around through your beads here, coming back through here, back down through here, over to there, back down through there, going through the beads here. You can see I went through the beads, but I didn't actually sew through anything. Just went from the front to the back, around to the front here, through my two seed beads, tightening that up through the two seed beads along the side. Remember that beginner thread too? That beginner thread is tied, so you don't actually need to tie your thread off there. From here then, you're going back through those two original beads, up through the bugle, two more of the original beads, up through those two beads there on the side. And then as you exit the two beads on the side, you're going back up through the crystal, through the 11 O seed beads, after and before the crystal, and then back through the 15 O and up and around the wire guard. You can see when I'm working and I have tight spaces, I love to turn my project. This usually will get the beads a little bit turned with their holes so that we, it's easier to get through them. And also if you have a size 12 needle, it's easier to work around too. Down and around you go, reinforcing with that second pass of thread. Once you're down through here, go ahead and take your thread and needle towards the back of the project Again, just retracing your steps of your thread. Going in here, bringing it to the back. And if you want to, you can tie off the thread right here along the back. I'm gonna go underneath a bridge thread or a thread that connects one bead to another. Make a loop, sew through that loop once, circle around through that loop twice, give a nice tight pull. Press your project down, go in with your thread burner, 
and burn the extra thread down along the project. From here then, you can see that that starter thread is brought from the back or from the front towards the back. I actually wanna pull it towards the front whenever I can, there we go. Pull up on that starter thread and burn down as close to the project as you can so you don't see it. And there you have a beautiful set of your crystal bezeled earrings. So just putting that then onto a nice huggy earring, you can change out for lots of different colors, make these simple little bezels, or even if you look at the back, you can get a starfish look too by doing similar colors on the edges and having that crystal be to the front. Now, if you wanna change this up a little bit and wanna do a different size crystal, in her version here, Chris has three seed beads wide for the 14 millimeter, along with that same kind of look of a pearl, and then some smaller eightos or some pearls on the side. And then for the smaller version here, they are 15 O's rather than 11 O's. So two 11s for the 12, two 15s are your spacers for the 10 millimeter, and then three 11s are your spacers when you go in and do a 14 millimeter Rivoli. All of these different looks and variations are really beautiful, created with the same idea in mind, the same bezel and the same setting. Thanks so much for watching these crystal quin bezeled earrings. They are a beautiful setting with a way that you can make them your own. Again, it's great that you can do them with all different size Rivolis, just changing up a little bit that count or size of seed beads going along with the three millimeter bugle. Thanks again to Chris for this beautiful design and the inspiration. And if you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss anything from us here at Potomac Beads. Thanks to my Twitch watchers as well for the name and the design ideas and bearing with me as we record this video. Thanks so much for watching and stay tuned for more inspirational designs.